Karen Williams. I'm the book mentor and thank you so much for joining me today. I'm just going to share my screen so you can see my presentation I want to share with you. So, wow, well, what am I going to share with you? I've got about 25 minutes. I've got loads I want to get out of the session today. So if you have any questions, please do, please do ask them or please do come and find me in the exhibitor area. So what I'm going to talk about today is author to authority. So how to write a business building book that's going to help you to attract opportunities, get high value clients, and also to raise your expert status in the marketplace. So I'd love to know a little bit more about, oh, bear with me two seconds, that's not working. I'm just going to reshare my screen and I'll be back with you in a second. That is the easiest way of doing it. So today I am going to be sharing I'd love to know where you are where you are on your book writing journey and what you want to know about the process so what i'm covering today is why now is exactly the right time to write your book you know in the uk or in england anyway we're in lockdown so why is this a perfect time to write your book um as we emerge from covid19 hopefully sometime next year i'll be talking about some of the three biggest mistakes i see many authors make when it comes to writing their book and i'll tell you about some of the insights that you can take from learning from those mistakes I'm going to talk about how you can use your book to attract new opportunities even before your book is published and I'll leave you with some simple steps to get started. But before I get into that I'll tell you a little bit about me and why I'm here today. Now my coaching journey, so I trained as a coach in 2006 and I started my business in the November. So it's 14 years ago um, this month which is a bit scary too and I've been celebrating over the last few weeks. So what have I learned in the last 14 years? Well, a hell of a lot, I will say. But those first few years were really interesting. I trained as a coach. I set up my own business. And for the first three years, I had some amazing successes. But really, you know, being a coach and running a successful business are two different things entirely. So in 2009, when I was doing my NLP Master Practitioner, I decided to do my modelling project and I modelled the mindset behind a successful coaching business. So what that meant is I spent some time with some really successful coaches to find out the secrets of their success. So I was looking for people who are really great coaches, but also really great in business. So what's the difference that makes a difference between someone who is not successful and someone who is? And I started by interviewing four amazing coaches and I thought, wow, I'm onto something here. I started implementing some of their strategies into my business and it really transformed it. And I knew I had to get this out to more people. So I went on to interview 11 people in total and I decided to write my first book about it. So that popped up on my Facebook timeline um, a few days ago, actually. So that was 2000, November 2009 when I declared I was writing my book. And again, I'd love to say that it was easy, but it wasn't. Because as you can imagine, with 11 people I interviewed, I had hundreds of pages of notes, loads of um, thoughts, ideas, transcripts. And when you've got that sort of information, it can, quite, it can feel quite overwhelming. You know, where do you start? Where do you finish? What do you do first? What do you do next? And I also went round and round in circles in my own head. You know, what if nobody likes it? What if I don't do these interviewees justice? What if, you know, what if it gets bad reviews on Amazon? All of those things were going through my head. And that's on top of the things like, you know, how do I get published? How do I launch my book? How do I market it? How do I sell it? And as you can imagine, during the 18 months it took from start to finish, I did really get in my own way more, more times than I care to, care to mention. But I did it, and in March 2011, I stood up in front of 70 people at my first book launch party. I'd come straight from a TV studio where I'd been talking about my book. And I will say that that book, The Secrets of Successful Coaches, is the thing that put me and my business on the map. It transformed it. It aligned me credibility-wise with some of the people I interviewed. Um, it helped me to get speaking engagements. It helped me to raise my profile. I launched my first event the next year and it really elevated everything I did. It's credibility and all sorts of things changed. So that was my first book. So that was March 2011. And I did say never again at the time. And like these things go, and I find with many of my clients, actually, you know, when you start to think about it and you realise how much you know, you need to do something more about it. So 2012, I went on to write my second book and I have now um, written and published six books over the, gosh, over the last 10 years or so. So that's a little bit about my journey. But as a book mentor, how does that work? So I've been known as a book mentor for the last six or seven years. So I started out in 2014 and 
because I was implementing some of the stuff from my first book and my second book, I was working with a lot of people who were where I was when I started out in 2006. So new coaches, new therapists, and a lot of them thought, well, Karen's written a couple of books. How does she do it? And they asked for my help. And that was really where my transition started. Because one of my superpowers is really helping to step back from somebody's work and to be able to see the potential and the authority and the expertise in what they're sharing. I'm really great in structure and actually being able to see the flow of a book when a client can be really stuck in it. And because I love reading and I love writing, it seemed like the natural progression. And as you can imagine, having done six of my own now, I've, I've learned a few things on my journey. So really since 2014, I've worked with hundreds of business authors to help them to write their books on topics from cancer to childlessness, um, leadership to loving yourself, all sorts of topics. And you can see some of them in the middle picture there as well. Um, I've won the Women's um, Business Awards a few years ago. I've also been a TEDx speaker. I did my first TEDx in 2017. So I, every day I get the opportunity to spend time with some amazing um, coaches, consultants, experts, and to help them to write their books. But not only that, but help them to really sort of step into their powers, to be courageous, to share some of the things that maybe they've never told anyone before. And that is a real privilege to be. And I've helped them to become um, business awards finalists, um, Amazon bestsellers, um, one got editors pick in Flight B magazine, all sorts of amazing accolades, launching programs off the back of their book and many, many more things. But that's enough about me for now. Um, if you have any questions about my journey, do let me know and I'm happy to share them with you. So you might be thinking, like I have, I have conversations with this, about this with people from time to time. So you might be thinking, you know, why should you write a book? Because if you look out on Facebook and you look through the adverts that come up on your newsfeed, you probably think there's loads of people telling you to do stuff. You know, they're saying do Facebook lives, do a program, do this, do that, do LinkedIn, do the other. So why is writing a book a really great thing to do for your business? Well, I'm going to share four things with you. So the first thing is the commonality between the people I work with is that they are providing a service. So they're not providing a product, they're not selling a product, they're selling themselves. And what's really great about a book is that people can get to know you before they engage you. Because if you're providing something intangible, your results are not shown unless people refer, um, um, refer um, someone to you. It's very difficult to actually see the results just by looking at your social media play, page or your website. So people can get to know you before they engage. And I, I remember having a conversation with a former client of mine earlier this year and she published in July 2017 and she was saying to me that she converted every single discovery call last year bar one because everybody who um, came to want to work with her they'd read her book they knew how she worked they knew her expertise they knew how how she could help them and that was the defining factor the book shared her process it shared her strategies it shared her best stuff her best tips and it really put herself above every other um, divorce coach in this in this instance as an authority in her area so the second reason to write a book is a book is so much more tangible than a blog post or a social media post and if you think about it you know someone might see you through linkedin for example they might see a post you've written and then suddenly they get distracted by a bright shiny object and they move on to look at something else if someone's got your book on their book on your on their bookshelf they're more likely to remember you because they're going, oh, I need help with this. Oh, I saw that person. Oh yes, I bought their book. So they're more likely to remember you because your book is on their bookshelf. And if you're really smart about it, your book could become blogs, your book could become podcasts, your book could become lives. And one of the things I teach all of my clients to do is multi-purpose their content. So everything that you do, everything is on brand. And I'll talk more about that later on. Earlier this week, I was having a conversation with one of my clients and she said, Karen, I've got so much more clarity in my process now. And I wryly smiled and said, brilliant, because there are so many unexpected benefits that clients get from writing a book and that clarity in their message when they realize how they do themselves, the knowledge they know, the expertise they have, maybe some of the results they're getting with clients. When they start writing it down and they start putting their process or their story down on paper, it really cements it in their head. And I love it when I see clients, you know, develop that confidence out of everything they know. Now they might find, you know, from time to time, they might feel, you know, like they're struggling with it, but actually when they really embrace what they know, it's an amazing thing to see. And ultimately a book helps you to raise your profile. 
you know, how many times have you said, oh, have you read such and such his book on such and such uh, subject? Because you know it's really good. And when people start doing that with your book, that's an amazing thing to experience. So you might be thinking, if it's that easy, why aren't more people successful? Well, when I wrote my last book, um, Becoming an Authority, which um, was published last year on audio, one of the things I looked at was the, um, the changing tides over the last 10 years of book publishing, because I started writing my book, my first book in 2009. Um, I was writing Becoming an Authority in 2019, and things have changed hugely. Now, you probably notice, and probably one of the reasons you're watching this live is because you want to write a book. And there are so many more people doing it now than there were 10 years ago. And it's become so much more easier than 10 years ago. But there's so many ways in which you might find you struggle or go wrong because you don't know what you don't know. And sometimes little knowledge can be a bad thing. So I'm going to share with you now some of the mistakes that I see people make. And so you can avoid them ultimately. And I'll also share some of the insights that you can learn from, from knowing about those mistakes. So the first mistake that I've seen people make from time to time is they write the wrong book. And I remember speaking at an event um, probably around about six years ago. And I, had a, I was speaking at an event about writing a book and one of the ladies came up to me and she said, I've got a publishing deal. I've got an advance. I went, oh my God, Karen, I'm writing the wrong book because she was writing a book that the publisher wanted her to, to write, not the one that she really wanted to write, the one that was aligned to her business. So here's some insights from that. So with all of my clients, one, one of the things I suggest, and I suggest you do this too, is think really strategically about your book and what you want to achieve. What is your goal for it? What is your vision? You know, imagine it was a year, to, year from now and you've, you've got your book in your hand. What would you like to say that you've achieved during that year, as well as getting it published? And ultimately your book should be totally aligned to your business to get results. And when I mean aligned, I mean that, you know, someone goes onto your social media post, they go onto your website, they read your book and the message is on point. It might be branded in a similar way, but they, it's, it's about what you want to get known for, which, which shines through everything that you do. Another insight is that one of the things I suggest my clients do is look at how they can self-fund their book as they write it. So I'm not talking about an advance from a publisher. I'm talking about, you know, using it, using it as an opportunity to talk about it. To, to build your credibility. Oh, I didn't realize you were writing a book. All of this puts you in a different league to anybody else. So the second mistake I see people make is writing something that's been done to death before, where there's nothing unique about the idea. And one of the things I suggest people do is to really do some research around their topic. So here are some insights for you. Now, the last thing you should do is just hide yourself away for six months to write it. Because if you do that, you're going to write the book that you want to write, but not, not necessarily what your readers want to read. So self-validating is key. And there are seven ways in which um, I teach people to self-fund their book, which means that, you know, it helps you to um, attract more clients and bring in more opportunities as you write it. And part of that is by doing research. So two ways of doing this. So one way that one of my clients is, or a couple of my clients are doing at the moment is they're doing interviews, interviews with other experts in their field to, um, to add some real value to their book. But also, you know, these experts are going to help them to promote the book when the book is out there. Another way of doing it is by doing a survey. Now, a survey is really great when you're smart about it. A survey is brilliant because you can start to find out what people want to hear and also doing it compliantly, build your list off the back of the research. And ultimately, all of this helps you to sense check your ideas. What do people want to hear from you? What do they want to read? And how can you make sure you deliver that? So let me take you to the third mistake. And I see people get bogged down in all of the stuff they want to share. You know, I know what it's like. I was there with my first book, with all of those transcriptions. And you can get so bogged down that the whole idea of writing a book can feel overwhelming. And I think, you know, the worst thing is people starting and never finished, finishing. Um, but also equally, I, I speak to so many people who have had dreams to write a book for so many years and they've never done anything with them. So here are some insights for you. Now, I'll, I'll tell you, if I have time, I'll talk you through the 10 steps or the 10 principles that I teach. 
Um, but within those, basically, there's four things that I would advise you to do before you put pen to paper or hand to keyboard or even voice to dictaphone. There are four things absolutely essential you do before you get started. And part of this is really getting clear on what you're writing before you get started. So one of the things I advise people to do is structure their book and not just structure it in terms of, you know, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, but really get into the detail of what you're writing, what's included in each chapter and what's not included. And if you're really smart about it and you, you, you map in some of your stories, you seed in some, some examples, it will help you to um, really see how everything fits together. And ultimately, it will make your book easier to write. You know, just imagine you've got 30 minutes available to write and you know exactly what comes next. You know, you could make the most of that 30 minutes and probably get a good few hundred words written. Otherwise, you might just sit at a blank paper doing absolutely nothing because nothing will flow. And sometimes we just need that trigger point to get us going. And also, I suggest you get help through the process because, you know, at the end of the day, you don't know what you don't know. So get support from people who know what they're talking about and know their stuff and get accountability to stay motivated to get your book done, and then it's more likely to happen. So I do see, as I said, I see so many people who have this dream to write a book and nothing happens about it. And then suddenly there's a tipping point that spurs them into taking action. And why do people struggle? Well, sometimes they just don't know how. This whole idea of writing a book feels like a massive project, you know, writing. And when I'm talking about an authority book, I'm not talking about a 40, 50 page book. I'm talking about something that really asserts your authority. I'm, you know, I'm talking 50,000 words, 200 pages. And the thought of that can feel quite overwhelming. So ultimately, you know, it's all about breaking things into bite sized chunks. So with my clients, it's like, you know, what's the next chapter you're writing? What's the next chapter after that? Rather than when do you actually want to get your book finished? Although, you know, I do like to go um, forward in time to see when they want to get published and then we work backwards from there. As you can imagine, time is the biggest barrier for many people. But actually, I've, I've already given you a really great example of time in as much as um, if you break it down into, you know, um, what you're writing next, you can really make the most of the time you've got available. And one of the things I talk about is that, you know, if you've got half a day a week, you could easily get a first draft within six months. So if you could write, say, 2,000 words a week in four hours, and that's four hours of real quality time, you will be able to get your book written, first draft, within six months. And if you're thinking, oh, it seems like a long way away, if you give, give yourself a day a week, you can do it so much quicker. So for me, it's about, you know, making it easy as possible for you to write it. Now, a couple of other things that happen for people is fear, lack of confidence because they may be scared of what people might think. They're scared of putting themselves out there. But what I will say is the whole process of writing it when you do it well, will cement your confidence and give you the ability to really believe in what you do. And if you're thinking, why me? I'd like to say, why not you? So I'd like you to reflect and think about this for a moment. I'd like, to think, I'd like you to think about what do you know? What's your expertise? What do people love about you? What have you experienced over the years that you know will help people, many other people? And I often find that clients are writing a book for their younger self, for people, for, the, for, for sharing some of the information that they wished they had had when they were going through a particular experience. And they've used that experience to help other people now. Think about what you've learned in your lifetime or in a particular period of time, maybe about your area of expertise, whatever that might be. And I've worked with people from accountants to marketers to coaches to trainers, a lay minister, a chef, all sorts of people doing all sorts of different things. But you've helped people. You've made a difference to people's lives. So just think about what you know, the stories you've got to share, the lessons you've learned on your journey, the highs, the lows, the, the darkest moments and the moments that have really excited you and, and made you the person you are today. Think about your testimonials your skills, everything you've learned on your journey. And I'd like to ask you this, don't other people deserve to benefit from what you know, what you've been through, so that you can help them and you can make a bigger difference on a much bigger scale? And if you write your book in the right way, people will really thank you for it. 
And I think more than anything, wouldn't it be great if you had a, a brilliant business building book that raised your credibility as you write it? So you might be thinking, oh, that's brilliant, Karen. That's really, really great. So what do you need to get crystal clear on before you get started? And I'm going to rush through this a little bit because I know I've only got five minutes, if that, left to go. So as I said earlier, I, I talk about 10 principles, and these are the 10 principles I teach through all of my programmes, um, through working with people. And I'm just going to check the chat because it might be telling me I've got less than five minutes. Um, and I'll also see if I have any questions as well. OK, brilliant. OK, I've still got a little bit of time. Fantastic. So um, the smart author system, is, which is what I teach to all of my clients, um, and I'm going to touch on the first one in a minute. Now, this is, this is a little bit like a lighthouse, and this is actually um, taken from the image um, from becoming an authority, because ultimately you have to put the foundations in place. So whether you're building a lighthouse, a house, whatever it might be, you have to put those foundations in place. So, so in a house, for example, you wouldn't paint the walls in the kitchen um, before putting the foundations in or before putting the units in. So all of that is incredibly important and you have to build upwards. So, for example, you know, one place that many people get stuck is they start writing their book before they know who their ideal audience is. So that's why it's all about building on the strategies. And as you'll see from here, um, scheduling and scribing, um, I don't even talk about that until principle number five. So what I'm going to do now is briefly go through um, the, the very first principle, starting with the end in mind, if it's going to pop up on my screen. Ah, and it doesn't seem to want to. Ah, here we go. So there's 10 principles I teach and there's various parts to each principle, but starting with the end in mind, and this is some things that you can take away from this and actually start to implement. So the very first thing I suggest you think about is your vision, and I've touched on this a little bit already. So your vision is the thing that's going to keep you going when you wake up in the morning and you go, hey, it's a writing day, where do I start? Oh my God, I feel overwhelmed. When you know your purpose and you know your vision and you know what it's going to give you that you don't have already, that is going to keep you going. And I'll often have conversations with people and the, the, the question I love to ask is, what is this book going to give you that you don't have already? What's it going to give your readers they don't have already? Again, that question a year from now is one that I love to share. And why are you writing it? What is your purpose? What is your passion? Why are you doing it? The second thing to think about with starting with the end in mind is alignment. And again, I touched on that earlier. How are you going to align your book to your business? Because if you're like many entrepreneurs, you've probably got hundreds of things you could write about. But what's going to go in this book? And the question I love to ask in this area is what do you want to get known for? If someone says that you're the go to person in X, what is X? What do you want to get known for? And one of the things I do with clients is I help them to get really to grips with their client avatar. So who is that ideal client? Who is that ideal reader? Because unless you're moving into a new niche, they're likely to be the same person. And actually, if you're writing a book that's too broad or is focused on multiple people, you're going to struggle to get it done. And when you know who you're writing your book for, you can really delve into some of the problems they're facing or do some research just to check that you're on the right lines. But you can also look at what they want to get from your book. So you can take people on a journey to get there. And the third thing we're starting with the end in mind is leverage. How are you going to leverage your book? Most, for, for most people, you know, you don't earn much money from book royalties alone. It's not one of those things that's going to make you a millionaire unless loads of people know about you and you're hugely successful. But for the average business author or business owner, you might make a few pounds per book sale. So how are you going to leverage your success? Are you creating a program or a product alongside the book or off the back of it? Do you want to do more speaking engagements? How are you going to sell your book? So one of the things I talk about and I've talked about throughout this is self-funding and self-validating your book as you write it, because that will enable you to make the most of your writing time. So there's no rush. You don't have to do one of these, write a book in 30 days or write a book in a weekend unless you really want to do so. So I'd love to know, you know, are you ready to make the leap to write your book? I am going to wrap up now and I'm going to see if there are any questions. Um, and please do get in touch. Here are my contact details. Um, there's freebies at my website, libertas.com, or you please do connect with me on any of the social media platforms. And I do hope you enjoyed it. So question, what is your view on self-publishing versus the traditional? That's a really great question. So 
I'm not a publisher, I'm a book mentor. So I help people to go from idea to final manuscript. But I work with a really great self-publishing lady who can help people at that stage. So my view is that there are so many pros and cons of each different way of publishing your book. There are so many pros and cons and so many, you know, so much I can't go into now. But certainly for somebody who's writing an authority building book, your book has to be the best it can be. I see a lot of people self-publish a book and they do a shoddy job. So for me, having the right team in place is absolutely essential if you're going down the self-publishing route. Now, the pros of self-publishing is time. You can get it done so much quicker than you can through waiting for a publishing deal. And if you do go for a publishing deal, there are a few things that you need to think about as well. A, time. B is um, copyright, intellectual property. Um, can you, you know, if, if you're going to launch a product off the back of the book, um, can you do that? Can you make sure that that's in, in the contract? Because I've come across people who have published their book um, um, through the traditional route and they found that um, they can't then use their content, which is an absolute no brainer. When you're, when you're a business owner, you want to be able to ha you know, own your own intellectual property. Of course, if you're self-publishing or you're going down the partnership route, you do need to fund that yourself. So that's where it's thinking about your return on investment. That's why I teach through all of my programs how you can self-fund a book, how you can actually raise money as you're writing it. So whether it's through crowdfunding, surveys, clients, launching a program, all of those types of things. So yeah, you know, please do get in touch. If you want a great publisher, I can recommend one. So please do um, so get in touch on any of these means. I saw another question pop up. Okay, that's it. I'm being cut off. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, and yeah, it's lovely to be with you and share my wisdom with you today. Thank you.